Hey everybody, welcome to Movie Time, I'm Sean. You guys, The Rock finally chose. He's Black Adam, oh my god. So this has been teased for quite a while now. The Rock has been saying that he's gonna be in a DC movie. He's gonna be badass, bigger, badder than ever. He's gonna go toe to toe with Superman. And he's finally decided what he's gonna be. He's gonna be Black Adam, this is pretty cool. He uh, tweeted this information out and in the tweet he said, uh, hashtag antihero. So I wonder, is this character that he's gonna be playing, is he gonna be pure evil? Is he gonna have some lighter side to him where he might be having some redeeming qualities? Is he gonna be torn about certain things? Is uh, Does he go with what he wants by logical thinking or does he go with what his heart tells him to do? Is it gonna be, what, what's gonna be the, the basis around his character. It's pretty interesting and I, I, I like his choice. Uh, definitely gonna be tough to find somebody to play Shazam opposite uh, Black Adam but uh, that is gonna be it's gonna be interesting. We'll see where, where this search goes because I definitely think it's gonna be tough to find somebody in size and stature uh, charisma to really play the opposite The Rock and you know win over the fans because The Rock's the villain. The villain's not supposed to win over the fans. It's, it's, gonna, it's supposed to be Shazam so uh, we'll see where this search goes to find the lead role of Shazam. Maybe there will be no lead role of Shazam. Maybe the maybe it's just gonna be Shazam, but it's gonna be Black Adam. Maybe Shazam. Maybe Black Adam goes from Shazam to Black Adam. I don't know. There's all kinds of ways this can you know turn out to be, and hopefully we'll find out pretty soon in the future. Also, with the Shazam movie, it has been announced by WB that it won't be produced by them. It's gonna be produced by New Line Cinema. Um, you guys might remember them from producing the Home Alone movies back in the day, as well as the Teenage Mutant. Digital movies. Uh, that's only that's what I remember them for. Uh, at least um, I didn't even know they were still around. To be honest with you, they are a subsidiary of WB. I think I said that right. And so they're going to be producing the film. And what has been said about this film, this Shazam film, and this is encapsulating the Rock and his character, the Black Adam. It's going to be its own type of movie. It's it's not going to be in line with the DC Universe. It's, it's not a Marvel movie. It, it's going to be its own type of movie. This leads me to believe I, with WB not producing it and them, you know, WB saying these statements about how it's not it's going to be its own movie. It's not going to be really in line with what DC is doing over there with the Dawn of Justice, Batman vs Superman. I really think it's going to be on its own like Plain field. It's gonna be over there off to the side doing its own thing, and I don't know if that's gonna be good I don't know if that's gonna be bad I do know with uh, certain clauses that WB has stated regarding the DC universe where there's not it's no jokes or anything like that I do think that this is a, a, a different Action to take I can't say it's a good action to take but they are gonna be at least having some humor in their film because I mean The Rock is a charismatic guy. Jokes just happen, you know, things just happen. And if you're going for that pure serious tone, I think you wouldn't be using The Rock to the best of his abilities. But even more so though, this whole policy is stupid. So I would rather see Shazam in the DC Universe with Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, uh, Cyborg. I would rather see them, you know, him in there and them, you know, drop this dumb clause that they're trying to force on all their DC movies. And uh, instead of just seeing it by itself, because I have a feeling like people are going to think that it's part of the, the DC universe with Batman and Superman, and it's not, and they're going to be let down, I have a feeling. And then what that's going to do is going to be bad, bad word of mouth, and then next thing you know, the, the film's going to go... I don't know. We'll see what happens in the near future. Hopefully we get some more information regarding this, and uh, hopefully it's some pretty good stuff. So How to Train Your Dragon 1 as well as 2 were both pretty big hits. They're both pretty good movies, pretty well received. They are trying to do a third How to Train Your Dragon, but the third How to Train Your Dragon just happened to be uh, scheduled for release on the same day that Finding Dory is scheduled for release. So because of this, they decided to move. Now, this is the funny thing about it is that they instead of just moving maybe a month, two months, either forward or back, they decided to move a whole year back until 2017. So. This is just kind of interesting how this movie, at this point in its production, has already made headlines. So, pretty interesting stuff, And um, but it's a good decision by them, because Finding Dory, that would probably be a bigger draw than How to Train a Dragon 3, at least in my eyes. Last bit of news this week, guys. Dax Shepard is in line to write, direct, and star in the Chips movie. Dax will be playing the character of John Baker, 
And Michael Pena will be playing the punch. Uh, I actually think that Michael Pena is going to do a great job in this. I think that he is one of the most underrated actors right now. He has great comedic timing. He, he's able to get out there and be stupid and silly in his character roles that are in comedy films. And he's also able to pull off some really serious stuff. Um, he has some really serious roles out there that he's able to like bring it. you know. And So I think he's one of the most underrated actors. So if this really does come to fruition, I think... I think Michael Pena is going to be the one that carries this. Dax Shepard, I like him on Parenthood. I like the stuff he's done in comedies, but he is still unproven as of now when it comes to writing and directing. So this movie could be really good and it could be really bad. Now I think if they go in a comedic way like 22 Jump Street, 21 Jump Street, and they kind of do a little spin to chips like that, I think this could be a pretty awesome movie. Now uh, again, this is all just me speculating and... and We'll see what happens if this does get nailed down and they do have a release date for this film. Alright guys, now it's time for trailers. There's three trailers that came out this week that caught my attention. I mean there's more than three trailers that came out this week. But three that caught my attention. The first is for the movie Horrible Bosses 2. It's called Ransom Note. And this movie just looks really funny. This one tells you a little bit more about the story, I guess. I think they are still leaving some things out because it doesn't tell you how you get to the point in the, the, in the trailer. Um, where they're at. So I am really excited about this film. I, I definitely think the trailer is pretty funny and I recommend you guys checking out the link below. The second trailer that caught my attention this week is called Seventh Son starring Jeff Bridges. This one is like a Knights of the Round Table kind of um, first night type movie but mixed in there with sorcery and like Willow type stuff, magic and witches and trolls and demons and it looks pretty interesting. I never would have expected uh, you know Jeff Bridges to do a movie like this and um, not just to say his name, there's a lot of good actors in this movie. Dijon uh, Hinsu, Hinsu I, 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 I'm not saying his last name correctly, or his first name probably. You also have, uh, I think it was Julianne Moore in there. You have uh, quite a few good actors in this film. So just because of the actors, I actually am really interested in this film. I want to see what it has to offer. I've never heard about it, which is funny, until now. So really interested in this one. Go check this one out. And last but not least, the final trailer that caught my attention is St. Vincent. This movie has a lot of good actors in it as well. Melissa McCarthy, Bill Murray, Naomi Watts, uh, not really don't really care about her. Chris O'Dowd, I find him really funny. He's a really funny guy. Uh, Terrence Howard. This movie just has a really good cast as well. Um, two two trailers so far uh, with casts. I mean that I'm just really impressed by. So uh, I definitely recommend checking this one out. It looks like this is going to be a bit of a comedy that's, that's, that's funny, funny, funny and actually tugs at the heartstrings. I'm interested in this. Melissa McCarthy's playing a character a little bit straighter than she normally does. Well actually let's just say this. She looks like she's playing a character a lot straighter than she normally does. And uh, I like this. I would like to see this film because of that difference. I, I want to see what it has to offer and plus it's Bill Murray uh, acting dumb, foolish and, and I want to see that. I want to see Bill Murray acting this way that you see him in the trailer. It looks pretty interesting. All right, guys, and last but not least, the movie of the week this week was Sabotage. I've been very interested in seeing this movie. I've heard some not so great things about it, but I want to see it anyway. It had some actors in it that I, ve I very much like in action movies, you know. Um, you had Joe Manganiello, Terrence Howard, Sam Worthington, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, just to name a few. There's the, the guy, the dad from Pacific Rim. Uh, uh, this movie looks really interesting just on, I guess, from a cover standpoint of it. I like the actors in it. I know it's an Arnold movie. It's rated R. It's going to be bloody, gory, uh, you know, bullet-filled fest. So I was interested in this movie. And throughout watching this film, I was definitely peaked numerous times. I definitely kept going, oh, I wonder what's happening. I wonder what's happening. There is definitely um, some kind of thriller in here. Um, there are some down spots in the movie where... I think that they take a little bit too much time to go from one action point to the next action point. And I think that is a downfall. Uh, Arnold's acting in this film, he tries really hard. Obviously, he's not going to be the best actor ever, but I like his effort. I, I give him an A for effort. Um, he's not going to be taking so many Oscars for his acting in this. The supporting cast, they did a, they did a pretty good job for, for their acting abilities in this one. Um, and, and the thing that really got me for the most part is that throughout the film, regardless of how some of the characters acted and how stupid they were or how um, assholeish they were, how much of a, a douchebag they acted sometimes, 
when some of the characters died, I was like, oh man, like I, I didn't really want to see that happen. I was really hoping this person survived or this person survived. I really hoped this person would make it to the end. Uh, so, so what I'm getting at is that even though there were some down points and there were some lulls in, in the movie, I definitely did have a connection to some of the characters. So I definitely want to applaud the movie for that. I definitely, I definitely like the action sequences where they're actually breaching a house or, or you know, you know, completing a mission. I definitely like that stuff. It was very systematic. It was very here, 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 left, right. It looked very realistic. I really enjoyed that aspect of the movie. The movie was bloody and, and it, <laughs> people died and things happened that you didn't expect in this film. One of the other things where I think this film fails is they wait so long in the movie to, tie, to finally kind of tell you what's going on with Arnold and they don't even hint at it at little by little. No, they just kind of Oh, here's what's going on, and here it's all for you, and then it's like, oh, well, okay, now I know what's happening already, and so, like, kind of the, the rest of the movie is a moot point, almost, because you kind of see what's happening, so I do kind of feel like that was a, uh, the biggest negative I have towards it, is that they should have been building up to something with Arnold if this was, if, if they were going to go that direction, which they did, they should have built something up throughout the movie, it should have been a gradual thing, instead of just all here in your face, and then boom, like, here's a final chase scene that doesn't live up to the expectations of the rest of the film. Because, like I said, I really enjoyed the, the, the procedural um, breaching and stuff like that, but then when you get to the final the final fight, the final scene of action um, before Arnold's, you know, vacay to Mexico, um, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a letdown. It's a bit of a letdown. Um, so, in, in that sense, when you find out what's really going on at that sen in that point, you, you find out everything in the course of five minutes. And I, I, w I might be off with the time there, but it seemed like in the course of five minutes, you find out everything that you need to know. And it kind of like, like felt like I was like the movie didn't do its job at that point. Other than that, if you want to go see a movie, an action movie with, uh, you know, guns, explosions, blood, uh, TNA, you got some TNA in there, uh, and, and then this is a movie. You got some, some very well choreographed uh, fight scenes or just movements in general with these characters because they're highly trained uh, military or police DEA agents and so they know what they're doing and they're, they choreograph what they do in this movie very well and so it's it, I really like this the the detailedness of this movie again there were some downfalls but I would say if you guys want that type of movie that action blood guts TNA and all that good stuff uh, go rent this movie it's in Redbox it's definitely gonna be worth that dollar fifty I would not buy this film but it's definitely worth the watch. All right, guys, that's it for movie time this week. Remember to click the like, share, subscribe buttons down below. Leave your comments, questions, suggestions in the comments section. Let's have a great conversation this week. We'll see you next time.